But what, what inspired you to get uncomfortable? Like, was it so uncomfortable at home? You're like, I just need a change or just like... Yeah, I think it was. Like, I think growing up being the only boy mm-hmm. in the family and um, just getting messed with all the time. I just knew that watching... The only thing that really got me was the only other Marine in the family was my uncle. Mm. And everyone would talk shit about him. Mm-hmm. Sorry, talk smack. Sorry, the, no, talk okay. about him. But they always respected him. So whenever he came in the room, he made the most money, made the most impact, always held the family out, never complained. Wow. And that's what's like, I want to be like him. Yeah. And it's like, whenever I'm able to be around him, I was always able to just pick his brain. He always take me with him places. Mm-hmm. So I was blessed to be there. You know, not talking smack about any other branches. Yeah. You know, with Navy, Army, Air Force, some of my other uncles were in. But he was always different. And I always wondered why. Mm. And that's what sparked. Because I always knew the Army and that's it. But I didn't know who the Marines were. Yeah. Until I met him. And he got me in the ROTC, connected me with all the, the top guys there. And my dad had his construction company, so I never saw him. So, and I was the only boy for a while. Mm-hmm. I didn't have any guy cousins till middle school. Mm. So it was just like, well, this is my only way of like being around other men. Mm-hmm. So what I a did. great role model. Yeah, big time. Very blessed to have him around. You said something powerful, like no matter what, they can talk hella crap, but they respected him. Yeah, that was the biggest thing. Like, because, uh, you know, for me, it was like, I just wish my, my girl cousins would like me and not, not beat me up or, like, <laughs> or even Aww. just like take my Tonka toy, toy yeah. away and just leave me with dolls. Aww. So like, yeah, I just want to do my thing. You know, like <laughs> I just wish people would like me, you know, because mm-hmm. I was always the weird oddball out. Oh. I didn't really fit in with the rest of the family. I'm kind of the black sheep. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's just how God made me. I just accepted it. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. So you, you knew you always want to be military in a sense? You know, I did, you know, because I was always like the wild child. Mm-hmm. I wasn't like the loudest or crazy, but like I just wanted to be outside. Mm-hmm. Video games are cool. I like them, but I always thought I could do better doing the real thing. Yeah, you know, it's I'm like, the same. <laughs> yeah, you'll play basketball here. We can go to the courts, bro. Yeah. I can do the real thing, play football. <laughs> you, know, I don't, you know, you can talk smack all you want here, but let me see how you do out on the court. Mm-hmm. You know, so that was kind of me. And... I like that. Like, I, my uncle always taught me just show him with your actions, not with your words. Mm. And that always stuck with me. Because he didn't talk a whole lot. Like, but he always did the most. So that's one thing I was like, I want to be like that. You didn't have a lot, but you did the most. Yeah. He made the best of what he had. That's and I think amazing. that's something that the Marine Corps kind of taught him too. Mm-hmm. And uh, able to learn that from a young age, even seeing my grandparents do that, mm-hmm. it's kind of helped mold me then. Because I was like, you know what? Yeah, I mean, I don't have like, a Sega. I mean, I have a Super Nintendo, whatever. But like, <laughs> I Sega got my, was my jam. Yeah, right. Two like, buttons. I'm a pro button smasher. When I could, be great. <laughs> but if not, then what else we got? Yeah. You know, just make it happen. Do you know what I love with Sega? So. It was the shooting games. Yeah. When you have the guns. Yep. I'm so good with the virtual one. <laughs> I, I was obsessed about that. with it. Yeah. Man. I love what you said about um, just being hands on, doing more with less. The more I'm learning more about self-help and business development and all these, they're just talking about 10x, that theory of 10x is easier than 2x. Mm-hmm. This is actually, it's not actually doing, working harder at the same thing, it's actually doing less and being more efficient. I see. Yep. And when you're talking about gaming, because we're both parents, Yep. and one thing that, I'm not against gaming, but it makes them feel like everything, everything is, they have, it's easy to get. Yeah. Being resourceful, it's such a skill. Yes. Even like my daughter would cry, I don't have this, or she thinks about all the things she doesn't have, mm-hmm. versus the abundance of resources you have now. That's right. And what I respect about the military is like, you guys can turn fire out of this piece of wood, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> you make it work no matter what. Yep. That's such a success habit and skill. Yeah, that was one of the greatest things that I so used to this day that I was really grateful for because I've noticed that one thing I think Tony Robbins talks about a lot being more resourceful than just having resourcefulness and having just resources yes right? what do you do with it yes you know because you know in the Marine Corps we get like the hand-me-downs of the Navy and like the Army what do you mean hand-me-downs we, we, we don't get brand new stuff all the time so most of the stuff that we get has been used already so, so who gets priority who's the favorite child in the military I first? think it's the Air Force they get like, ah. they get, like I think like a nickel or like a a dime of every dollar that comes in, yeah. something like that. Really? We get like half a penny. No way. Yeah. But then, okay, I'm not in the military, nor do I know, but just through my circle, 
naturally I'm surrounded by Marines oh, okay. or who I want to be with. And it it's a natural alignment. Okay. It's really crazy. So my like Sifu, my coach, you, a lot of people that I'm working with is very Marine. That's and I was awesome. like, huh. And you can tell there's a different culture per brand, per branch. Yeah. It's, it's very different. Yeah. And, uh, not saying we're the best or anything like that. Everyone has their own purpose. But yeah. It just aligns with me more. Like mm -hmm. what? I just like that ruggedness of like, just give us the basics and we can make the best out of it. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's are, something that Are I you like. the amphibious one where you can do water and land? Yeah. We're oh. amphibious, so. It was fun. That was a hard part for me, getting more in the water, because I really did being here. Besides <laughs> going to Raging Waters or something. Yeah. But, um, raging Waters is the same yeah. thing. Raging Water preparing you to, to be a Marine. A little bit, yeah. Just being that, that wave pool. But, um, <laughs> yeah, no. That's exactly what it is, and that's what I love, because I realized, like, why are we getting any new gear? Like, what's yeah. up with all this old used stuff that's barely like, halfway used? Oh. Well, I was going to carry duct tape everywhere. Oh, then, you're pro at duct tape. So, yeah, it was yeah. just a lot of different things like that. So, how long did you serve as a Marine? I did my four, uh, 2006, 2010. Mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't want to get out. I put in a reenlistment package. We got screwed over when I was in Afghanistan. Mm. And then I got out for a year, tried school, hated it. Mm. And then I went back in for, for two years. And then I got out because I was a little, it was a little too PC for me at the time. I got in a lot of trouble. <laughs> and uh, I think the war was dying down. Things were getting a little slower. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't realize it till then. But someone always told me the non-war Marine Corps is like the worst one to be in. What do you so mean by non-war? Uh, and like, maybe just be for me and my example when I was in, like when you're not, when there's not a lot of rotations going and deploying, yeah. it gets slower. It, when they get slower, leadership can get bored. Oh. And you just start messing around, just doing a bunch of dumb stuff. The pace changes. Pace changes. Yeah. Priorities change. Mm. And it was just slower. It just was different for me. Mm -hmm. Maybe because when I came in, it was so fast paced. Yeah. It was a lot going like on in 2006. Fight, fight how you train, right? Yeah, That's exactly. Learning. Yeah, 100%. But there's then, no, uh, there's no fighting. Yeah, it was just like, oh, it's <laughs> not boring now. Like, you know. <laughs> You know, I was an instructor at the schoolhouse for a little bit. Mm -hmm. That changed a lot. You know, things were getting real PC. It was like, well, you never know when the next thing might pop off. But people are still going out there. So uh, I didn't align with some of the leadership. So I decided, you know what? Uh, I think it's best that I go. And oh. I started getting into like sales. And yeah. I realized, you know what? I think I could do a better job outside of the military uh -huh. with the skills that I have. So that's when I realized, you know, I think it's time to make that transition and move. Mm. So it wasn't an easy decision, but, you know, it wasn't necessary when I felt like. But it was a, a great decision. It was, yeah, because I always saw myself doing 20 years. I mm -hmm. wanted to retire. I wanted to stay Whoa. in the whole time. Uh -huh. And that was big because my identity was so ingrained in the Marine Corps. Yeah. Like, who am I outside of the Marine Corps? So that was uh. a big finding myself again kind of moment for me. Transition because I didn't know because all my friends were different. Yeah. Everyone that I really trusted, loved, stayed in the Marine Corps mm -hmm. or went somewhere else and I couldn't find him anymore. Mm. Yeah, it was just different uh, set of alignment with everybody. So... It uh, it definitely took its toll. I was I felt lost for a while. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Thank God, you know, I yeah. reintroduced to God and went back on that path after going to Tony Robbins. Yeah. It'll pee things trying to figure my brain did out. Did you walk on fire? Are you a fire walker? I did. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> went back, did crew for two years, and yeah, it was a uh, it was an awesome time. It was definitely part of the, the process. I think I just felt like it should have been done faster. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's always the pace of things. I think in my mind, that I had to learn like, hey. Let it take its course as is mm -hmm. and just walk by faith and see where you end up. You're still young. I kept thinking I was super old. But uh, just a <laughs> well, How young are you, if you don't mind me asking? 30, just turned 37. Ah, just starting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so. And you just became a dad, right? Yeah. Or not just, but how old's baby now? Baby's 13 months now. So 13 months. Every year. Yeah. So transitioning from military identity. And then civilian life, which you got into sales or business. Yep. And then dad, that's a lot of transition. It's a lot, yeah. It's a lot going on. Do you Anything feel, yeah. yeah. Do Sorry, you feel like that. the training in the military and or even Tony Robbins helped you with those transitions? Like what, there's gonna be a lot, cause we're working with a lot of transitional programs in the military right now at Ensuring Impact. Yep. And I feel that there's such a need for development or identity building. Yes. Um, Yes and no. Yeah, I did because I didn't know how to communicate outside of the military. I had oh. to learn how to like not cuss again or <laughs> not say F every word or yeah. like how to be so direct and understand the different personality types of people mm -hmm. and how to communicate with them and listen. Mm -hmm. That was the biggest thing for me because I was just so used to type A mm. all day and that was it. And you just, that, that, that was all. So learning how to slow my speech, how to listen was a big thing for me. 
Um, so yeah, those programs did help out a lot. That's something I wish I did have. Mm -hmm. You know, the biggest thing they did for me transitional wise is just about how to get a job, how to write a resume. What is that? <laughs> it was like, oh, oh my God, what a culture that. shock. Yeah, right. Cause I was like, hey. uh, resume, I know how to tie a knot. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I can put it together and take apart a gun. Yeah. It's like, what, <laughs> what, you know, so what really are you preparing me for? But that was back in like 2010 when I did that class. Were, were you able to get a job? Uh, no, I went to school right after. I did get a job uh, as a contractor for a while, mm -hmm. working because I was in aviation, mm -hmm. worked on helicopters. And then so I did that for a while, got injured through the work. Aye. And uh, that's why I left, moved mm -hmm. to Orange County. Got our, you know, because I always did fitness on the side. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always did. They always put me in charge of, they call PCP, pork chop platoon. Any Marines that are overweight, you got to wake up. Pork at, chop, what? Yeah, pork chop platoon is what they call it. So <laughs> you wake up in the morning, you run them to death and, yeah. and before they go to work. And then uh, oh, you so monitor good. their food. So that's kind of what I was, I was held with. So doing the mobile certifications, HIP program, mm -hmm. uh, got my NSCA certification, personal training, just did it on the side. And then I got opportunity to do it full time in Orange County, which mm -hmm. is I moved up, took a leap of faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I made it happen. So it was a blessing for sure. So that's kind of my transition from there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was, a, did it help out? I want to say it did. It just, there was definitely a lot of hiccups. I was always getting in my own way. It was the biggest thing. Ah. Uh. And what do you think, if you don't mind, and unpack that a little bit, do you feel like it's an identity thing since, like, military? Because that's so ingrained. I mean, you, you mentioned Afghanistan. That means you did tour. There must have been things, and you don't have to talk about it. Yeah. But so many transitions and... Yeah, there were a lot. Like, transitions as far as, like, me growing as a person. Like, mm -hmm. I took a lot of guilt. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of guilt that I've learned that my dad has from mm -hmm. his childhood. Excuse mm -hmm. me. Watch talking to me, but um, it was just me. We lost a lot of Marines who were younger than me, mm -hmm. and that took a toll on me. Mm. And especially seeing like you know, a single mom who only had her son that was yeah. all she had, and she lost ah. him. And just hearing that, like being around these different things and stories, is like it really eats at you. Like, damn, so like, do I deserve to be here? You know, mm. that's kind of what I felt like because there were moments where that could have been me, but I got yeah. pulled to go do something else. And it was just like, well, I should have been that person, and he should have went home, mm -hmm. you know. So you start having those thoughts. And you forget that, like, instead of having something really demeaning, what I learned was, how do I reframe this so we're all, mm. I'm here now. Yeah. How would they want me to live? Oh. That I made it? Coffee, yeah. So that was a big thing for me. What so, a like, powerful reframe. Yeah, just to recondition my mind. Just thinking, just thinking down all the time, like, what I could have done. Like, what can I do now? Yeah. You know, so that was the biggest thing. And also to reinforce it, too, because sometimes that does creep back in. Mm -hmm. It's normal for everyone to have those thoughts and go through that. So that was a big transition. But for your bounce from... back is eat faster or it's more, you're oh, being yeah. more pulled by that vision now. Oh yeah. Now that yeah. I'm a dad, it's like, you know, I can always sacrifice my time, whatever, what I needed. But like when it comes to her now, it's like, oh no, like, <laughs> it's hard line. Like, nope, nope. it's baby time. It's her and me. And mm -hmm. now it's like anything that I have to do, anything that is necessary to like propel her mm -hmm. and bring the household forward is what I'm all about now. So yeah, I was always not really a yes man, but like always down to help. Yeah. But now it's like learning those hard boundaries. Like, like nope. Yeah. Like, this is family time and family time only. I'm not gonna have my phone on me, mute social media, and it's on. Powerful. This, yeah. So that's. You're a yes man, but you're protecting your yeses. Yeah. Like I'm not yes to everything, but like yeah. Yeah. But I love to help. <laughs> but I, I think that's why God created me since I was a kid. Like I realized like I like to help people, and I think mm -hmm. that's why He put me here. Mm. I just wasn't sure where He wanted me to go. All the jobs were what lifeguard. Raging Waters, security <laughs> before, Marine Corps, you know, doing all these different things and yeah. EP now. And it's just like, I think he's always, you know, and it aligns what we do here. Yeah. Like you mentioned before, asset protection. Asset facilities. protection. You know, like preparing, you know, protecting the families, their income, you know, provide, protecting their future mm -hmm. in case something happens. That's when that definitely aligned with me to actually come to ensuring impact. Like this is how we really should do it. Yeah. Especially with the OPM, you know, it makes a lot of sense. So... Well, you've been with other IMOs, or you've seen, you've been, how long you been a life agent? Well, I've been, actually, the, the seed was planted in high school. Whoa. For America. And then um, I just knew it was a great industry to get into, even when I was in the military. Uh -huh. I just knew that, let me get through this phase first, and mm -hmm. down the road when I get out, that's something I would like to do. That was the entrepreneurial seed that was planted, besides my dad owning his own business. Mm -hmm. So I did that, uh, left, met you guys at our, our previous yeah. you know, IMO, then from there, Ever since I met you guys in line at one of the events, I knew like, this is dope. Like, I love this team. I like what you guys do. I like the social media aspect. You know, like, you guys do insurance. I'm not really sure who you're doing it with. But yeah. Like, the way you guys brand yourselves, I loved it. Yeah, just personality-wise as well, too. So, yeah, then uh, moving and merging into uh, transitioning, upgrading, I would say, mm -hmm. to ensuring impact. 
uh, two years ago now, was it? A year and a half ago? About a year, a year and a half, yeah. Yeah, crazy how time flies. And the type of people we're attracting, like, I'm very yeah. honored, seriously. And 100%. do you see all the other vets? Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's a melting pot. I love yeah. it. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> and it feels, it's so natural yeah. when you have the right, we're all mission driven. Yes. Right. And I love all the strong personalities. Yeah. I welcome it. Yeah. Bring all the branches, right? Yep. It's, and that's, but the fact that we have a mission we're all fighting for, and with the conversation we had with you earlier in coffee is, for the first time in a long time, I don't. I feel like I don't have to watch my back because I know the yeah, right people got our that's back. That's the way it should be. You know what I mean? And it's we'll call each other out, right? Yeah. We'll back each other up because we know what the mission is. I love that. You know, there's no first level leadership type people here, like John Maxwell says. It's not just about your title. Mm -mm. You know, you just you know. I love how everyone's able to humble themselves and come together for the mm -hmm. greater good of the mission. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that I missed about the military was that. That was the hardest part for me going to school was people withdrawing from classes during projects, not caring, mm -hmm. and leaving the bulk of the work to like me and like two yeah. people, whoever wanted to stay. So like that's one thing I love about here is everyone's like, all right, what needs to happen and move forward? Yep. You know. And we welcome all ideas. Let's do it bigger, better, bolder. Exactly. Because things are changing. We have to adapt just as fast. That's right. And we have that mentality, all right? What got us here won't get us there. That's right. Right? And or hey. Nato, what do you have that I don't have experience in? Can you protect my blind spots? That's right. He's a celebrity I'm <laughs> oh, interviewing you're right just, now. You're no, I'm just shabby. kidding. <laughs> just kidding. You're good. Okay, I get Thank you, sir. Grab. Yeah, right. Of course. No. Thank you. <laughs> you're good, brother. Take care. <laughs> oh, man. There's a lot of people like you, like us, who want to serve and help people. And we trap our identity in a career that we dreamed of as a teen. And then we transition into adulthood and then parenthood. And that just like messes us all up. <laughs> it does and um, I love that we're unpacking who ensuring impact is as far as a group because we get to unpack each other's baggage in a way together and allow a safe place so I see you leading organizations beyond us seriously you as a man as a father as a leader in many ways and I can't wait I'm, I'm excited to be on this journey with you and I can't wait to unlock each level you unlock Thank you. and I'm freaking cheering you on i appreciate that it is a blessing to be here too to be a part of the team because to be part of organization finally that's about that mm -hmm. and not just like first level leadership or just your title and what you do based on what how it looks to others mm -hmm. and it's different in the background i like that you can be yourself and be transparent and be open and do those things so yeah i'm excited to actually share what i can and contribute as you as i grow as well in the team so excited to be here and learn from everyone else too you know it's, yeah it's been something i've been praying for for a while uh, to find the right team, the place I can feel home and not feel like I have to be one way. Yeah. Kind of like once the uniform's off, it's like I'm somebody else. You know, so I'm very grateful for that. Very yeah. blessed to be here. Um, when you said uniform, not only uniform, we wear many hats. Yes. Um, there's been different journeys that we're both on, like, hey, are we doing it, not doing it? Like, are we in or we need time and space, right? Yeah. And what I learned through you, if you don't know, like I, I, I noticed in the background, bird's eye view, is I love the fact that there's no pressure for you to be anything you don't want to be. Yeah. That we prioritize what's important to you. It's like, hey, I'm, the healing, being a dad, right? Being there as a husband. Oh, yeah. Like that to us at Ensuring Impact is more important and that will impact beyond anything which will transcend to your business. Because people would want to follow you for the man that you are. Does that make sense? Makes sense. And then how you do business is just an extension. It's like, okay, I don't care if it's personal training to EP, which I learned executive protection, which is freaking badass. I can't wait. If you need an assistant, let me know. Appreciate you. <laughs> yeah. um, so how do you feel? Because what we do here is really just a, an entrepreneurship platform for you to be who you want to be and be the best you can be. Where do you, f do you feel that there's a natural alignment from being a military or being a father or being a fitness person? Was it an easy transition because there was alignment or do you feel like you had to change because of this license or this type of organization? That's a great question. You know, honestly, it, it was an alignment and then the challenge was me kind of getting in my way of thinking like, well, that's how this person does or they do it. I need to be more like them to be successful. Uh, and that's when I realized like that's not true because there's so many different aspects and pockets to like business and niches and things mm -hmm. you can do that you can fall into and create for yourself. So to answer your question, it was in alignment, but I had to train myself to, hey, like people love you for who you are, not because mm. you're trying to act like somebody else. You think you need to be that person 
because you see them being successful that that that, that may think that that may be the only key to success maybe because in the military I felt that way like they, a lot of leadership wanted you to be type air kind of mm -hmm. certain personality to really lead from the front mm -hmm. so i thought i had to mold myself into that person so uh, for me understanding now that that's not necessarily true out here like in, the, in outside the military mm -hmm. you can do that like for me now being a dad taking that one step back from my mental health mm. and to be near my family has allowed me to take 10 steps forward now because i'm more clear like yeah. okay this i'm not doing this just to be part of the team just to show up and, and, and just get a participation like i was here to help you know, participation point so, yeah <laughs> you know what's up like no like i really want to contribute so it's like for me to be the best me i realize okay take a step back it's okay, catch up on your rest, get your mental game right, be there for your daughter, mm. and be there for your puppy. She's getting old, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, and be there for your wife. And it's just like, and then grow, you know, get back, realign with God, and then now we can move forward. Wow. So now we get everything in alignment, moving together, not just trying to juggle everything like I'm falling forward. That's how I felt like. So yeah, that's what I, hopefully that answered your question. I'm sorry if it, I No, it does. You, but like, and you're talking about 10 step forward. Since our last catch up, everything's just been falling into place for you now. Yeah more clarity, you, f you seem a lot more grounded, a lot more clear, and I'm excited, really. Like, I wanna follow your lead and co-lead with you. I'm really excited Appreciate where that. we're going. Yeah, it's good to uh, set those healthy boundaries and fall in that line. Yeah. So, like, Can I ask you a deep question? Of course. Um, you, I feel like there's a sense of legacy now that you have a daughter, right? And especially yeah. with a lot of transition, a lot of paths. All those experience are blessings in disguise, mm -hmm. right? How would you want your daughter to remember you? Ooh, that's a great question. I know I kind of threw it at you because it's just so nah. deep, especially you got this dad gang Hell hat yeah. on. Yeah, here you go. Like, <laughs> for me, it was like, that's a great question. I was actually talking to my wife about that last night. Oh, how crazy. Like, it's just like, you know, honestly, if I can just set that example for her to know that you can go out there and be, I wouldn't say less fearless, but more courageous. Mm and to lean on God more of knowing who he created you and who you have back in you. Mm -hmm. You know, they say that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, right? Mm. So you got to work like that. Like who's really gotten your back? So for me to, to let her know that, hey, your dad messed up. Your dad failed at many things. You know, you came in this world and everything changed. So it's just like you can you can make those changes and just if you really want to. You know, you don't have to be bound by the identity of where you're from or mm. where you've been. You know, you can grow out of it and evolve into something much better. You can walk more by faith than by sight. That was the biggest thing that I want to let her know. Like, hey, if it's thing I can teach you is that, dude, like you, you can do anything. You know, you can literally do anything. Like you can make it happen. It's going to take some time. It may not be on the time frame you want it to be. Mm -hmm. But as long as you continue to take those inches forward, you know, inch by inch, it's a cinch, right? Mile by mile, it's hard. So like Ooh. you got to like take it easy. Don't don't try to just do it like. I think hustle culture in a way kind of tainted some things for me. Like I got to do this for the gram or look good or oh, yeah. it has to be by this <laughs> standard or else it doesn't matter. It's like, no, nah, dude, like honestly, like one thing I got from Nip Nipsey Hustle, I listen to him a lot, was like he talks about like, you know, uh, just make sure you cross the line and at the time it takes, right? Mm. Just focus on, on your stay in your lane and just keep going. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. That was the biggest thing. So that's one thing I want to teach you. Like, yeah, you may see the world do this and that and get there. But is it really them taking that intensive sword and taking a mile back? Yep. You know what I mean? So, like, what is it in the long run? So just teaching her that wisdom. That's one thing that I've been seeking after is that wisdom. Like King Solomon, just like, I want that wisdom to pass down to her. Because that, those are just different principles that last you the generations of people becoming successful and maintaining that. And especially for legacy, that's the biggest thing. So if that answers the question, like, for me, if, who I can be for her, just, just a great example. of Like, yo, dad did it. He did it this way. He failed, mm -hmm. you know. He adapted and overcame. He left certain industries to become better for us to, mm -hmm. to thrive and move the household forward, uh, regardless of what it is, not caring what people think, you know, because uh, I was always, you know, Asian household, you got to do this, nurse, this, Air Navy, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it may be. You know, I kind of never really followed that mold, but I just took the work ethic and ran with it. That was the biggest thing. So if I could teach you that work ethic, keep your faith, move forward and be patient, man. Just stay at it. That's the biggest thing. I'm taking notes, Dad. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. It's ever yeah. evolving. So, well, know. I want to thank you in advance for your uh, leadership. You're, you're a person that I highly respect and admire in many ways, and I'm, I'm glad I get to do the, I get to do this with you. Amen. I, I'm learning with you and through you, and uh, I would like to thank you f for all the daughters and future daughters, and all for the future sons and our, our men, and uh, thank you for ensuring impact beyond yourself. Thank you for having me be here. I'm blessed to be part of the team and thank you for the impact you've had with me as well. I'm grateful to be here. See your oh, example yeah. as a as a mother as well with kids. So that's
Oh, you it got a glimpse today. It gives me strength. Like, yeah, I mean, like, dang, if they can do it, that's where I say I got to suck it up too and just like really get after it because it's possible. So oh, totally. You. I, it's it's absolutely when you said the power of reframing because mm -hmm. there's times I'm just like, Ugh, like right. Mm -hmm. You're you're kind of a little early. I'm like, oh, I'm having a mama bear moment. You're like, like take your time. Handle it, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. gonna handle it. Yeah. And then you just gotta make sure. Uh, I gotta send you this meme about how having children at each stage is a spiritual journey. Okay. And each age group gives you a certain type of lessons. So actually being a mother made me a better entrepreneur and leader. Because someone once told me, if you cannot lead children, how can you lead adults? Great point, yeah. That's a great point. Oh, it's deep. I can even, this most recent field trip I went to, oh my God, they gave me the most rambunctious group. I'm like, the misfits, which I love. Uh, give me the strong personalities, but Good. they got a drill instructor out of me. Good. I was like, look, I'm not like any other parent. We're going to win as a team. We're going to lose as a team. And I had a sassy girl. She was sassy. But I want to do this. I was like, you don't have to convince me. You got to convince your team. Mm. All right. Now you're all about yourself. So we can sit here and wait. And the longer you're all about yourself, we're not going to move. She was like, okay, then we can go do this first. So we, we came together as a unit. Noted. And, I, and I checked her. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, I'm not like, look, I could sit here all day. And what's funny is one of the teachers told me that uh, she only listens to sassy women. I'm like, okay, because I sassed it up that day. There we go. But you know what also, and I think this is a perfect segue for all the time that you spend and prioritize with your daughter. You know how crazy, I prioritize every field trip and every moment I get to read to the kids and volunteer at the school. The kids who don't have parents show up, it's a different demeanor. I wish my parents showed up or is my dad coming today? No. Just us showing up makes the biggest difference in their world. Hell yeah. And when I was hanging out with these children, one, one kid would be like, my mom works all the time. She works two jobs and she doesn't even have time for family time. Like I'm sitting in a bus for them one hour, we're going to San Francisco to the Exploratorium. I hear all, I hear everything. Dang. And that compassion in me, right? If I could, or when we do, I can't wait to pour into the next gen. And, um, we're our children, what we're teaching our children now, because we know. But we had to go through our stuff, yep. right? You, you listen to Patrick but David? Yes. Okay, there's just one, one video on his podcast he talked about. And this is not a judgment of right and wrong, but it's just a concept to help me really think. He said the wrong people are having children and the right people aren't. Uh, yep. I was like, you talked to my son so today. True. Just who he is. You can tell he's going to probably be a generational breaker just because... Big time. Like the curse breaker, just because of how we're showing them how to think and role model. Yep. Versus the children who do not, and they're multiplying even more. So yeah. we can be here and complain, they, 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 this, yet we're outnumbered by what we want to influence. That's so right. that was very interesting. So the fact that you're pouring into your daughter, mm -hmm. which is the other meme that I saw, he's a, she, she or he wanted to change the world, so she's, so she stayed home with her kids. kids yeah. Right? That's what a, a shift in mindset. Big time. Because for me, I thought, oh my God, I would fail as a human or fail in my career because I'm a mom. I don't have time. Mm. But what game am I trying to win at? Yeah. Right? What game are we trying to win at? So I love that I'm playing this game with you because it's beyond money. It's not that. It's lifestyle. It's legacy. It's impact. It's what will our children do beyond us? That's right. And you're absolutely doing it. And there's that natural alignment. And I'm, t I'm learning a lot from you too. So this is, a, this is us learning from each other. But I, but I can't believe it's our business to do it. I know. And that's so Isn't awesome. that great? Like, this is our lifestyle. Let's go take a walk and talk. Yeah. Uh, come drop off our kids. Let's have our leadership meeting here. It's, it's harmonizing, right? It doesn't, feel like, it doesn't feel like a Monday. It's a Monday. I know, right? Dang. <laughs> it's a, a Monday. And that's how we do Mondays. Yeah. And I love oh. that. And that's... That's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. So I know you got to get back to your daughter, but thank yeah. you for your time. No, thank you guys as well. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for letting me join you guys in your morning routine. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Uh, so let me the gene. Maybe if you come back, we'll see. We're yeah. so awesome. back and forth. That's cool. Yeah. So SoCal, NorCal, here we come. Yay. <laughs> Appreciate y'all. All right.